the third part of uh, this podcast about new ways to think about real estate. And really, because of these racial restrictions, because much of the South Bay was restricted to whites only, um, there is absolutely systemic racism. And I'm not saying if you're listening to this podcast that you're a racist or you have bias. What I'm saying is, is this is part of systemic racism in a massive way. Real estate, a huge accumulator of wealth for people, a place of safe haven, a place to be safe at home, rest, sleep, family, security, for a long, long time was reserved only to whites and is a systemic racist issue that only just recently was removed and still probably affects people and their biases in some way, shape, or form. So how do we solve this systemic racism that's going to take a long time to get past? Well, there are three topics that, you know, or three items I think that we need to talk about and think about and consider. And these are just certain things that I've come up with off the top of my head. There are going to be infinite more ways that we can address this. But um, my three topics are one, off-market deals, two, love letters, and number three, how we present listings. Let's talk about off-market deals. There is a place for off-market deals here in the South Bay. Uh, I think agents put way too much into their value uh, uh, of delivering off-market deals. The MLS finds the highest and best price. I don't care what an agent tells you about the 10 agents they talk to uh, with a stable of clients. The highest and best price goes to the MLS. If we as realtors are making a practice of having off-market deals happen, excuse me, off-market deals happen more often or talk about off-market deals or encourage off-market deals, if you look back and go, historically an area was limited to whites only, that means there's generations of families that are normally white. Realtors typically grew up in an area or know the area well or have been there a long time and established roots. That typically will be someone that might be white. And then if you're shopping property off market to residents that were limited to white residents only and typically are a majority of white residents with a majority of realtors of people who grew up over the years here, that is a furthering of systemic racism that was unfortunately uh, brought upon us from a lot of these racially restrictive covenants and a lot of the laws we lacked and, and just unfortunately the way we were uh, uh, as a country in the early 1900s uh, with, with attitudes to uh, black Americans and, and people who were not white. Um, so I think we really need to think about off-market deals as being part of the problem more than the solution. Even though people like to say, hey, I got a great deal off market or I sold my home for top dollar off mar market, I don't think it does any favors for making a fair and open marketplace for everyone and an inclusive market for anyone who's looking to buy a home. Here in the South Bay, off market deals do not serve the needs of an inclusive community and marketplace. Love letters. It's common or has been common for buyers to submit love letters to sellers. This one is obvious. It allows you to see what someone looks like. If they're a family, maybe they talk about where they live currently, what they do for a job, all protected classes that allow for bias to creep in for a seller to make a decision. A lot of people are taking the right steps. There are brokerages that will not present love letters. There are agents that will not write love letters. And my hope is, is that the state of California will step in and make love letters illegal. I personally do not uh, or encourage my sellers not to look at them. I remove them for clients and because I typically see that it allows my clients to make bad financial decisions. They end up picking a lower offer because someone resonates with them, and it's typically someone who is like them. If you have a family and a family's offering you and they have young children like you had, you might be more apt to sell them the house. That is illegal. 
that is discriminatory. And if that happens because you see the picture of someone and their skin tone, it can create unconscious bias. My hope is, is that the state of California will step up and make these illegal sooner rather than later. And I think a lot of agents are picking up on it that it just is not in the best interests of anyone. Um, presentations of listings, last topic. You know, uh, how do we approach this? This is a really interesting topic because the MLS has rules to prevent bias and discrimination one of those rules are hey you can't have any humans in your listing photos if you have a young person an old person someone working a family a single person someone celebrating a religious belief someone with a certain type of skin tone hair color that may influence someone the mls does not allow people to be in listing photos so the question becomes is, how do agents present listings? Should clients take down all photos that tell you who they are? I don't know that answer because people are allowed to decorate their home as they wish. Uh, you know, hang items of importance, whether it's family or accomplishments or art that they like. It's almost impossible to uh, address this situation, but there should be ways of presenting a listing and advising clients, white, black, Asian, whatever, male, female, transgender, uh, different religions, etc., of how to present a house in the most neutral way as possible. Because that not only allows buyers to consider your home, and hopefully get top dollar without unconscious bias, but also a buyer to feel comfortable in your home and allow them to feel comfortable making an offer and moving into a neighborhood that traditionally maybe someone doesn't look like them or think about religion or politics the same way you do.